Mission. Mission. <laughs> I'm just having a little bit of fun there as we get started tonight. You know, if you've been joining with us for our latest preaching series, you'll know we've been talking all about mission, how each and every single one of us is called with a purpose, with a mission, with a reason to be right here on this planet in this day and age. We've had some great messages. We've talked about mission closer, that each and every single one of us is called to be building and deepening our relationship with Jesus Christ. We've talked about mission transformation. We're all called to be on that journey of, of discipleship, of becoming more like Christ in our, in our character, in our mindsets, in our daily life. And wasn't last week wonderful? We talked about mission mama and some of the attitudes that mothers do exemplify, but all of us are called to have, um, to, to take us in resilience and, uh, and, and, and determination to accomplish and to go the distance with our mission. Well, today I actually wanted to bring just a, a, a particular lifestyle, a particular heart that I believe can really help underpin all of those aspects of mission and particularly help guide each one of us into our own personal mission. The, the understanding, the awareness, the sensitivity to God for ourselves as to what has God actually created me and designed me. What has God created you and designed you for your particular mission on planet Earth right now? So, um, oh, sorry, just had to put that down. It's getting a little heavy there. Um, this, this is my life. Well, not literally, of course, but for the purpose of my sharing today, this backpack is going to represent my life and all the different roles and responsibilities and things that, you know, I, I need to carry and I need to be responsible for in, in my life. Before I go there, actually, let me just share the scripture, the story that's really inspired my message today. And it comes from Luke chapter 10, verses 38 to 42. We, my, many of us are familiar with this story. As Jesus and the disciples continued on their way to Jerusalem, they came to a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. Her sister Mary sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he taught. But Martha was distracted by the big dinner that she was preparing. She came to Jesus and she said, Lord, doesn't it seem unfair to you that my sister just sits here while I do all the work? Tell her to come and help me. But the Lord said to her, my dear Martha, you are worried and upset over all these details. There is only one thing worth being concerned about. Mary has discovered it and it will not be taken away from her. So park that story in the back of your mind and come with me on a journey. We're going to unpack my life and probably something that represents a little bit like your own lives as well. Oh my goodness, it's really busy at the moment. Um, there's just so many different things going on and I mean, it feels overwhelming at times. I can't even seem to pack everything in that I need to, but um, let's just see what we've got. I mean, work, work is obviously quite a big part of my life probably your life too. Obviously, there's the hours that we spend in our workplace. Um, some of you may have compulsory sort of training or rostering commitments uh, and, and the commute to get to and from work. Um, what else is, is sort of stuffed in here? Um, study. Well, there you go. I know some of you are still actually in formal study, enrolled in different courses and, and, and degrees and English tests. Um, I myself, I may be in full-time paid work, but I'm also continuing to study. And look, the reality is all of us, it's, it's healthy to have a, a commitment towards lifelong learning. Even if you're not studying at university, there will be something, I'm sure, that is worthy of your attention to be developing, self-development. If you're, if you're a parent, to be learning, reading books, listening to podcasts about how to raise children um, in, a, in a godly and in a character-filled way. If you're in leadership or if you're looking at starting a business, then actually investing some time into, into study and, and, and developing yourself and, and learning and um, you know, investing in, in growth for yourself. We've got to fit that in our lives. Um, what else have we got here? Let's see, there's some, ah, oh, life it admin. <laughs> Don't we all love life admin? Um, paying bills, budgeting, uh, the sorts of things that you, you, know, you just can't get away with that. You do need to do some cleaning. You do need to do some laundry. Um, you do need to, you know, spend some time on um, just just keeping keeping things in order and making sure you don't, you know, let chaos reign in your life. I suppose um, groceries, food preparation, cooking. I suppose that sinks in quite nicely then to. Uh, oh my gosh, what are all 
what are these things? Um, they're everywhere. Oh, can't, uh, oh, goodness me. Um, chaos. As I said, sometimes life gets a bit overwhelming, doesn't it? Um, but look, along with your life admin, I'm sure you've got some self-care tasks. Uh, we need to eat. We need to sleep. Um, hopefully, we can fit in some exercise or something that's good for our bodies to move. Showering, dressing. I mean, that brings with it the, the I guess, life admin that we've got. Make sure we've got enough clothes in the wardrobe. Um, I will admit I've actually sent my daughter to school for the first three weeks of term two in her summer uniform because we, we omitted the life admin of ordering her winter uniform. Um, you, you need to be kind of looking at these different aspects and managing them and juggling them and keeping them in order. Um, I mean, some of you for self-care, you might in fact be well overdue or, or, or you know, need to put in a schedule for a dental visit or a doctor visit or an optometry visit. Um, I prioritise to get some... Um, self-care with a haircut and, uh, and get some new glasses recently. Well overdue, let me tell you. What else have I got in here? Um, let's see, I've got, I've got church. Hopefully that's a big part of each and every person's life who's listening here tonight. Um, of course, we've got a number of different church meetings that sit on the schedule. We're here for Friday night, um, Sunday services. We've got life groups, maybe Saturday night training. Anyone who's part of a ministry or a ministry team, you will know that your church responsibilities go beyond just the scheduled times as well. And there's some preparation and some team meetings and hopefully some, some prayer and you know, vision casting and, and really... Um, you know, time that's spent outside of just the church meetings as well to, to hopefully pop in, pop in this little box of your life um, for church. Let's see, I've still, oh my goodness, I've still got more of these things. They're, <laughs> they've gone everywhere. Um, uh, what else have we got? We've got, uh, this represents relationships. Let's not forget the people in our world, you know, husbands, wives, Children, um, your housemates, if you're in a share house, uh, friends, work colleagues, your parents, siblings, uh, you know, people who, um, you know, maybe it, it can take a bit of effort and being proactive sometimes to keep those relationships, you know, alive and building and, um, and, and uh, you know, active where people know that you actually care about them and you're thinking about them. Um, so that, that's important. Let's not forget our relationships. After all, Jesus did say the, the second greatest commandment is to love your neighbor as yourself. Um, I haven't quite got to the bottom here. My, my life is still, goodness me, crowded, <laughs> crowded with um, ooshies. Um, I, do have, I do have leisure. Um, and in fact, I will make the point that having some time, some activity that is helpful for you to unwind and to de-stress and to get a genuine sense of pleasure and joy that you know god actually didn't intend our lives to be just all work and no play and completely boring um god gives joy he gives blessing and, and, and joy and he adds no sorrow with it so maybe maybe for some of you that leisure is sleep <laughs> or exercise maybe it's a little bit of a, a, a craft or um music or something creative uh, but but just you know, have a think about what you do as something to unwind as, as a leisure. And uh, let's just see, my goodness, I have a bag that's just got all these bushies. And um, one more thing that, ah, uh, let's not forget this. Right at the bottom, my relationship with God. Um, I'm glad it made it into my life. I'm glad it was there, but um, goodness, isn't that, an interesting reflection on how some of us may in fact live our life that our relationship with God gets squeezed into what's left, what's there at the bottom and um, there, there, there it is, there it goes. I mean, just look at this. There's, there are so many important things that we have to look after and attend to in our lives and let's face it, we've all only got 168 hours per week. Um, I say only, but look, let's reframe it and say, hey, we have 168 hours every week. And I mean, let's face it, that's what God has given us. He gave us, you know, uh, actually the, the, the assurance that if we ask him, he's going to help us to redeem the time, which means to be wise and understand how to use it um, in a way that accords and, and aligns with the mission that he's put in our lives and, and uh, as calling us to accomplish through our days. 
So what I, the question I really wanna to ask today, I'm asking myself, but I'm hoping that you'll come along this journey with me, is to ask how, how can we possibly pack all of this in, so many important things, and yet stay true to that bigger picture of mission that God has called us to. I don't really have big points today, so I'm hoping that you just maybe have a notebook and you can just catch little um, tweaks or, or nuances or tips that I share as we go, whatever's relevant to you. But um, broadly, I am gonna sort of nest it in two principles that I'm hoping you can catch. The first principle is that if we wanna live with mission, you cannot escape the power of drawing aside. To put that another way, it's the power of putting aside distractions. <laughs> um, you might have been wondering what all these little ushies were about in my bag. And the thing is that these ushies actually represent what I believe is so common in all of our lives. And it's, it's the distractions that creep in, the, the little things that just crowd out our time and our day that if we're not careful, we don't even realize that they're there and they're taking up space and attention and time in our lives. And hence my bag was so full, I, I couldn't even zip it. I was overwhelmed. I mean, let's, let's face it. I go to work. Um, maybe, maybe for a lot of us, our workplace is in fact the location where we might be the most focused we are because we've got a task list and we're working with people and we've got other people helping to keep us on track. Um, but um, I mean, I know at the end of my work day, I can be left with a whole list of to-do things and reports and paperwork that need to be done. And it can be a little bit tempting and distracting, kind of. You sort of think, oh, I'm not quite sure what the answer to that report is. So I'm just going to jump, um, jump on and do a Google search or find something and Oh, that article looks really interesting. I think, um, oh, that, that could be relevant actually for that other person that I was wondering, what, what supplement should I give them or what treatment do they need? Um, oh, hang on, Facebook has just popped up a reminder that, um, oh, someone's birthday, I haven't got that birthday present. I'd better, look, I, I'm gonna forget later, so I'm just gonna go jump online or do a bit of an online shop order and, uh, oh, that's, that's a good present for that person. But, um, oh, that wedding, oh dear, I haven't RSVP'd yet. Let me jump, I'll, I'll reply to, yeah, sorry, I haven't replied yet, but I am coming, I'll be there. And oh, now I've got to organize a wedding card, wedding present. Um, oh, this, uh, this YouTube, oh, new song. Yes, there's a new song, let me listen. Oh, and Creative Trio have put something out. Let me, oh, put my earphones in, I'm gonna listen. And um, I'm sure you can relate to this before you know it. 10 minutes, 20, half an hour, maybe even an hour has gone by in the little distractions that are crowding out the focus and the productivity to actually do the work that you're supposed to be doing in that moment, in that time. Um, clear the distractions, let's do that. Um, even, in, uh, even in our self-care, I mean, let's talk about self-care and how easy it is to get absorbed into the distraction of I mean, it is a phrase in English we call self-absorption. It's where you're just, you know, you're just brushing your teeth and suddenly you go, oh, 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 there's a zit or oh, oh, there's a hair that shouldn't be there. And suddenly you've got the, sorry, too much information perhaps, but you've got the tweezers out, you've got the pimple creams. Um, maybe you've even jumped onto Instagram to see, oh, what's that latest product I was hearing about that can help kind of with blemishes or, um, oh, my hair, oh, oh oh dear, there's some greys coming in. And then you think, well, I've got to get it coloured. And self-care, self-absorption, um, focus on appearance and, 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 and self is endemic. If you don't deliberately pay attention and watch what's happening with your self-care, I guarantee you are going to find that this whole space is just crowded out with distraction upon distraction upon distraction. A lot of what I've shared might seem to be perhaps trivial things, but to be honest, some of us can get really distracted with really good things too. I know for myself, when I'm studying, a lot of my study, and trust me, I spend at least an hour, maybe even two to three hours, most nights studying some of the material that I need to be able to develop treatment plans and, um, and management things for the patients I look after. Um, if I'm not careful, I can get distracted in studying all the sorts of health advice and medical things. And you might look at that and go, well, that's fantastic. You're so disciplined and so diligent to study to help people. I can get caught in that thinking myself, I'll be honest. 
But if I'm also honest with myself, there is a point to which all of that study can be simply a distraction, if you like, from what is actually the main mission. What is the main purpose that God's calling me to do with my 168 hours in my life? This is a risk some of us run that, like Martha, we can get so busy with the serving, with the ministry, with the doing of everything to try and provide and serve for other people, that in actual fact, we get distracted by doing good, that we can miss the God things. Don't let good be the enemy of best. Um, and, and this is the power, as I kind of said, this first principle of learning how to draw aside, learning how to actually put aside distraction and come and be still, come and meditate, come and sit at the feet of Jesus, like Mary did, to listen. I, I'm so inspired by the example of Jesus because, I mean, hopefully we all are, <laughs> but the truth is Jesus was a busy man. Jesus was like, I think he's the equivalent of what a modern CEO today would be. Um, he was in demand. People wanted him everywhere he went. There were people who you know, were, were asking him questions, people who wanted him to come and heal them, people who were you know, looking for his inspiration, looking for his wisdom, people who were trying to trip him up and trick him and he had to be prepared and ready to give the right answer to the right people e each time. Um, but, but I am so inspired by the way that Jesus understood the power and the, the, the importance of regular, consistent time drawing aside away from that busyness, away from, can I call it the distraction of everyday life, to pray and to just be with his father. Mark 1, 35 says, before daybreak the next morning, Jesus got up and he went out to an isolated place to pray. That's one example, but it's not the only one. I mean, Jesus, after he was baptized, he spent 40 days in the wilderness alone. No iPad, no smartphone, no internet, probably not even a scroll to kind of, you know, read through the ancient Hebrew scriptures. He was, he was out there in the quiet place in the secret place he would have been out in the wilderness communing with his father and i think as a modern society we we have unfortunately lost the art of silence every time there is that moment if you like of of what's next what what should i do the temptation for all of us i'm sure is to pick up your phone open Facebook, Instagram, maybe Google, whatever it is, your, your feed and, and, and scroll. Um, it, it is endemic. I see it everywhere I go. I myself was waiting for an appointment the other day and the person I was going to see was running about uh, maybe 10, 15 minutes late. And look, it would have been so easy to pull my phone out and even, even do something useful like catch up with text messages or a um, bit of online shopping or as I say, catch up with the current affairs or something on my phone. And in fact, every single person in the waiting room was doing just that, every single person on their phone scrolling. But in that moment, I just, I made a choice that I'm going to be still and I'm just going to tune in in my heart to, you know, just be. There wasn't anything profound, nothing kind of super spiritual about it, but I just made a choice that, hey, I've got a moment to just connect my heart with God. And I just, I just thanked God that I was able to, you know, be in that place, thanked him for the sunshine. It was a sunny day. I looked out the window, I appreciated the trees and the nature that was there. I made eye contact with the receptionist, gave her a smile um, in the midst of her busyness. And as I say, it wasn't anything profound or super spiritual, but it was for me just a, a moment of drawing aside from the busyness and from the, if you like, distraction that particularly social media and our smartphones do in our, in our everyday world. And I just took that moment to reconnect and especially to turn my heart and my thoughts toward God as a way of showing that, Jesus, you are the center of my life. Whenever I can, when, wherever I am, I'm just going to tune in and open my heart to you. Speak to me if there's something you need to. Nudge me if there's something you need to. But you know what? I'm not demanding that. I'm not requiring that. I'm just going to connect. Just as a friend, I just want to hang out. And that's what it was. Um, I, I, I'll say that, you know, I've, I've actually, through my life, through my busyness, learned how to take those moments wherever and whenever I can. Um, sitting on the toilet, 
<laughs> to just tune your heart to say, hey God, having a good day, how are you? <laughs> um, commuting, if you're someone who walks to work or catches the bus or the train or whatever it might be, um, Again, this is something that's really shifted in my world this year and I'm, I'm loving it. Um, instead of having to drop kids off and do all that um, daycare drop off, I'm actually able to walk to work and just, you know, to pop my earphones in and start with a worship song. But often I'll in fact turn the music off and just have some moments of quiet meditation. I love to have a, a scripture, a verse of the day, if you like, and just as many times as I can through the day, um, just to, just to let that verse mull over in my mind and, and think about, you know, Lord, you've said, um, you've said if I call upon you, that you will show me great and mighty things that I haven't yet seen. God, I want to call on you. What does that mean? What does that look like in my life? I'm, God, I'm calling on you <laughs> right now. And it might just be a 30 second, 60 second little break. You know, maybe even when I'm getting up from my desk to go and pull my lunch out of the fridge, but it's that turning aside turning off the distraction and in the quiet of my heart and my mind tuning into God. Isn't that, isn't that something we can all do, something we can all practice and just, you know, just enjoy, enjoy our relationship with God without kind of feeling that it's, it's, it's this little kind of thing that we have to squish into whatever's left of our day. But um, in actual fact, what we can do is we can unleash the presence of God and bring the presence of God into every part, every facet of our life. Which in fact leads me to my second principle, the really big principle I want you to take home with you today is that when you have that principle of drawing aside and connecting with God, no agenda. I mean, of course, sometimes you need to pray and bring things deliberately to him, but, but, but having those moments where you're just coming to be with God and just tune in, just listen, just be in his presence. It is in those very moments that God is actually able to shift in your heart an understanding of priority. Because once you've been alone with Jesus, once you've actually drunk from the well of his perspective, there is something inside you that shifts. Whether you realize it or not, this, there's, there's going to be a shift that's going to help you to start making decisions about all these other things in your life that will start to align with his perspective and with his priority and with his mission for your life. We see that from Jesus all the times that he drew aside, he, he hung out with his dad, he hung out with his father. When he returned into the, the, the interaction of life, so many times he was empowered and equipped to make decisions that were actually moving his ministry, moving the kingdom of God forward in the mission God had called him to. We see that before he chose the 12 disciples, he went up into the mountain to pray. Before he actually went to the cross and had the endurance and, and you know, faithfulness to endure all of that um, all of his, his trial with Pilate and with Herod and going to the cross, he withdrew into the Garden of Gethsemane to pray. He actually wanted his disciples to join with him in that moment. But nonetheless, Jesus prioritized drawing aside to be with his father, to get God's perspective, God's heart, God's mission on the inside of himself, which empowered him to keep going through all of those steps he, he did. And, you know, we see it we see it in Mark 1, the scripture I read from Mark 35. Um, before daybreak the next morning, Jesus got up and went out to an isolated place to pray. It goes on in verse 36. Later, Simon and the others went out to find him. When they found him, they said, everyone's looking for you. But Jesus replied, we must go to other towns as well and I will preach to them too. That is why I came. You see, once you are someone who, who has a sense of mission, has a sense of purpose, momentum in your life, there's always going to be people or, or maybe even tasks or whatever it is. There's, there's always going to be something that needs you, that wants you. Like Simon came and said, the people are looking for you. They want you. Um, and if we're not intentional about how we spend our time, there's always going to be something that, that fills that in, whether it is the frivolous distraction or the fact that, you know, maybe for some of us, our work just gets bigger and bigger. This box grows and accumulates because we're so useful in our workplace that, that um, you know, suddenly we're getting all the shifts in the roster and it just fills and it builds. We can become so good at the doing that 
all of these really important things start to actually inflate and take up more and more time in our life, but without necessarily having the priority to meet the mission that God's given us. Like Martha, she was busy with doing good things, wanting to serve people, wanting to be a good hostess, but distracted from what was most important in that moment. So let's make this real. You know, the thing is, if, if we're always operating in our own logic and planning, um, we will be busy. 21st century life is busy, but we need to stop. We need to ask ourselves, are we busy doing what is good? Or have we learned how to focus our energy and our attention on doing what is God ordained? And I can't tell you what that is. You can't even tell yourself necessarily with your logic what that is. The only person who is able to communicate that priority and that mission heart to you is God himself, the one who created and designed you. And this is where if we can learn how to live with the presence of God unleashed to cover, to wrap, to embrace, to buffer every part of our life, that we bring his presence into everything we do, that is where you can truly live Busy, yes, but productive, not tiring and getting burnt out, but, but actually triumphing and really pushing and, and, and accomplishing the fruitfulness that God's called you to. So let's just take a few minutes now to repack, reestablish what we're doing in our life with God as the center. He's the way I start my day. He's the way I want to finish. Work. It is a necessity. I'm not telling you to quit your job and pray and read the Bible. We need, you know, to be responsible for our, for our work. And that takes a position there. With our study, as I've mentioned to you, um, wrap God around what you're studying. Is it, you know, where does it fit? What's the important things for you to study right now? I can tell you that I could spend hours every day studying and studying and never feeling like I've learned enough. But... When I keep God in the center, when I understand what he's directing me to do, I can find that, that balance much more readily. And to be honest, he's so gracious. He directs me to the right resources quickly. So I'm not spending hours distracted in the things that aren't as important for what I need that day or with that set of patients I'm managing. Relationships, huge one. How many times have you stepped out in your own wisdom or logic to try and you know, hang out with someone or, or build a friendship and at the end of the day it just seemed unfruitful or maybe even I, I know I, I will confess for myself I've sometimes stepped out to say something or do something in a relationship and even caused some offense or been hurtful but when when you actually wait on God you know Isaiah 40 30 31 says those who wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. This is as simple as that drawing aside going, hey God, I'm a little bit concerned about how my communication with my sister's going at the moment. I just wanna surrender it to you, commit it to you, ask for your grace, um, give me some wisdom how I should approach that situation. I am wrapping my relationships in the presence and in the direction of God in my life. With church, look, I am well aware that you know, church is a priority for us and hopefully everyone listening. But sometimes we can get stuck in doing church in our own strength and just coming because it's a habit or an obligation. But church is the place where God's called us to, to you know, to come together with him, to partner with him, to bring his kingdom. And again, whatever, whatever church attendance, whatever church ministry you're involved in, let me encourage you. Bring God's presence back into that space. Don't just do church, but come and be a child of God, uh, you know, a vessel of his, of his presence and of his spirit in the church ministry. Um, I have somehow got this order slightly wrong, so let me get a moment here. Um, because honestly, when you wrap God's presence around everything, there is a place for everything. It will fit. It will flow. It will be much, much smoother. Here we go. And you'll notice that as I'm wrapping God around all the important things in my life, suddenly I'm, I'm not as affected by these distractions anymore. They just fall by the wayside. And it's like the great old hymn says, when I look into your face, all the things of this world become dim in comparison to the presence and the beauty and the importance and my desire to be with Jesus, to be with God.
the life admin, the self-care, the work, the study, the leisure, um, the relationships. Look, it's all in there. There is a place for everything and for everything a place. But in, around, upon, in everything is God's presence. And that comes by drawing aside, by having that heart attitude that whatever I do, wherever I am, God, I'm bringing you into it. Now, I just want to encourage us, just going back to that story from Matthew, sorry, from Luke again, where Jesus was in the home of Martha and Mary. We're all so quick to look at Mary and go, oh, we need to be people who come and sit at Jesus' feet. And absolutely, there is a place for sitting at Jesus' feet. But can I actually just encourage you? I see a lot of myself in Martha, and I think maybe some of you see yourselves in Martha too, that life is busy and we want to serve and we want to help. If we're not careful though, we get distracted and we get absorbed and stuck in the serving without knowing how to balance those times of sitting at Jesus' feet. This is what I love about Martha, that yes, she was distracted. Yes, she was busy, but she she recognized it. She pulled herself up and she said, I'm not just going to put up with this. I'm not just going to hang out in the kitchen muttering to myself and getting frustrated with Mary because I'm the one doing all the work. Martha took the decision in her busyness, in her distraction. She came to Jesus. She asked Jesus. Now I want to ask you, in your busyness, in the distractions and the busyness that you have in your life right now, are you just putting up with that status quo? Are you just putting your head down to work even harder to try and get through everything? Or are you willing to acknowledge, Jesus, I'm busy and I'm distracted and I'm not sure if this is really what you want for my life right now. I'm going to come to Jesus and I'm going to talk and be authentic and be genuine with what's going on in my life. And the second thing Martha did that I really admire and want to emulate is she didn't just dump on him a complaint and then rush back because, oh my gosh, the chicken's in the oven, it's going to burn and I've got to get busy again. Martha stayed to listen <laughs> to Jesus' response where he said, in fact, Mary's chosen the better thing at this moment and I'm not going to take that away from her. And are we willing to have our busyness interrupted for Jesus to say, come, Come, my child, come and draw aside. Come and make room for you to do whatever you want to, to do whatever you want to. I just want to move your heart. That's where I want to be, right here in your presence, Lord. And pour my love on you, no matter how much the cost. I freely give it all to you. 